Here comes Sir Richard. Thank you. I only got part. The part was about the black angels. Um, black can represent the fear of the Lord. We always see it as sin. But in Psalms 18, it says he comes down in darkness. And then we know in Exodus, what the 20th chapter, when he comes down on Mount Sinai, it's darkness with the thunders and the lightnings. Mm -hmm. And this year is uh, coming into the year of 5771. 5771, Hebraically, is the year of some, uh, Ayin. How many people know Ayin means the eye or the well? And a leaf, a leaf is the father. It's the fear of the father. The eye of the father is coming back. So um, God told me he's getting ready to pour out the spirit of the fear of the Lord back on the church. And Ananias and Sapphirias is coming back. Wow. One of the main words I've had coming into this city when I first came in was that people would prepare their hearts. That we pray for leadership to prepare their hearts because this would be a Jericho city. And he would not let anybody touch his glory. And, that, and, and he is long-suffering and doesn't want to see anybody. Because I'm not a doom and gloom guy, you know. I'm a life guy. But there's coming a fear of God that if we touch and we move in that thing, then I see people dropping, you know, because God is going to move on this city. Wow. Um, I felt led to share last but not least is um, one of the things I've been sharing with Barbara is on um, the prayer points is about whether spiritually or naturally about the Mansfield Dam coming down. And uh, I began to see that. God began to have me to pray into that. And then the first meeting I went and I uh, saw you, or the second meeting I saw you live was when we both met um, uh, the lady from Storehouse, Betty Evans, Dr. Betty Evans. And coming in, um, I saw a harvest. I saw a wheat field being harvested. And I was coming in from San Antonio. And, um, the, and then it was being separated from the earth. And the Lord says the harvest was the ministries in this season. It was not some, those souls would be coming in because each stalk represented a church in this region that had grow up into, uh, you know, a stalk and it was still separated. So he's harvesting and sifting and blowing his winds. And then um, I went up and basically what I was sharing that because a door opened for me and then I got caught up in the spirit. And in the spirit, I saw a fault line underneath Austin. And the Lord told me to stomp and command it to shift. Well, I found out there's a fault line in Austin. I didn't know that. And then Jeff Jensen came into town and prophesied there'd be a 3.7 earthquake here that would be a 150 mile epicenter. Bob Jones, 150 mile epicenter. So these are just things we need to pray into because of Daniel Gracie uh, is doing ADRN. Why? We believe what I really believe in accessory that we need to pray that people have ears to hear and eyes to move, not to speak fear of the region. But if we're in areas that will get shaken or things will happen, that we'll be in a position to help those people and be people who move out of their houses if something does happen. But that's just what I wanted to share. Thank you. All right. I'm Dania Huffington and I work with Abba. And um, what I'm going to share has to do with... Um, a vision that the Lord gave me of turquoise nuggets being spread throughout the city. And when I started asking God what that meant, this is what I've learned. And I think it ties into um, the friends being available and it also ties into the color blue. So um, it's associated with the tribe of Zebulun. And what we know about the tribe of Zebulun is that they um, are carriers of the commander's staff and that they risk their lives to death, that they defy death. And so I think that the God has placed people throughout the city that have this anointing to um, fight warfare, to be the river of life, to be sanctification points for people as they come, um, being hungry, needing healing, needing food, um, that they will release a life-giving flow of the Holy Spirit um, for those throughout the city. And that ties into what Richard was saying about just people um, needing the help when the times of trouble that are coming. So I just want to um, pray that those people are identified, that they're lifted up, that they're brought into the position that they have um, as called by God, and that they are released into the power that they carry. So that would be my prayer when we pray that down. That's great. Thank you. All right, you well, you'll read the book that you got in your hands. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I talk about the, the four border tribes of Judah, Issachar, and Zebulun, and that, uh, it's that season, so that's a good word. Okay, who else? I got Come on, Brother Bill. Good to see you, man. I can't dress for this. I like that. <laughs> you're a liberated man. I love that. Well, it's good to be here. 
Um, the, you know, we're, we're really, I, I sense in a really important time, of course, I think all of us know that, of intercession and crying out to the Lord. And, and what I saw happening, uh, you know, part of what God's been speaking to us is the, the, the need for the, the, uh, the unified cry, that, that we become one people. And I had a dream the other night, and in the dream it was really strange. Uh, I was talking about other churches, and I would kept saying, this is the father's family located at this address, the father's family at this address. And it was really weird because as I looked at each church in the dream, there was no name on it like our church or this church, River of the Hills or Cathedral of mm -hmm. Praise, but they were all called the father's family. And uh, so what I sense is happening, you know, there, there's a breaking down of the divisions and an establishment of unity. Uh, you know, back in uh, 73, when the Lord spoke to me uh, about my future, one day I would pastor a church in the south and in, in this place, and I, and I see it more than just our church, but there was, out of this place would be flowing many apostles and prophets all over the earth. Yeah. And I really believe Austin is destined to be a, a place where that happens, where there's a release of, of apostolic anointing that really flows out of this city. This city is gonna be is marked uh, as a line of the tribe of Judah that will influence the whole earth. Yeah. And not, not that we're special over any other city, just that God ordained certain places to put his mark on, and I believe Austin is one of those places. Mm -hmm. And and I see there's a unity coming, and you know, in the book of Chronicles, it talks about, there's three instances in Chronicles 5, Chronicles 20, Chronicles 7, where they, they all came to the place that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. And as they begin to sing that, that, that was all the result of the unity that they had. That, that song came out of that. And, and we see where Jehoshaphat you know, they defeated the enemy simply through the worship of unity. We see where the priests came into the temple and the, all the trumpeters and all the instruments were, were in one accord. And then suddenly the, the place where they were, were at, a cloud of glory came in where the priest could not even stand to minister. We see in Chronicles 7, 2 Chronicles 7, when my people who are called by my name and humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven and heal their land. And, and in all those instances, what I see, there's a, there's a, a the unified crying out. It's like a unified intercession where we, we make one sound. You know, the scripture talks about in the last days that we, we'll have one mind, we'll have one heart, we'll all see eye to eye, we'll have one Lord, we'll have one faith, we'll have one baptism. And so we, we see there's a dismantling of, this, of the thing that man has built. The Lord is systematically dismantling that. And, He's bringing down the, the things that we've tried to create so that he can create his kingdom in the midst of us. And that, that of course, most of the things he's bringing down in us is the things that are in our heart. The, the selfish ambition, selfish desires, the lust, the greed, the pride of life, all those things that are coming down so that the mountain of the Lord can be built instead of the mountain of men. And all our kingdoms are submitting to his kingdom. But it's in, out, of, out of that atmosphere where the, the, the playing field is made level, there can be a, a unified cry that God begins to raise up. And so I sense that we're in, we're in the beginnings of that here in Austin. I mean, it's been, the foundations have been laid for generations for this to happen, but we're in the beginnings of a crying out as one people. Yeah. And for that to happen, we all have to decrease so that he can increase, amen? Yes. amen. And uh, so uh, we, we had a crying out yesterday, right night and yesterday at church, it was incredible where one sound began to come up. And, and we, you can feel the penetration that, that that makes to heaven. And when we penetrate into heaven, guess what happens? There's that healing, that flowing of water comes back from heaven to the earth. And I sense that we're really in, a, in a need of intercession right now because we, we know what Bob Jones prophesied. I mean, that really got me, you know, about the thing in the Gulf. And it's only the church that can hold that back. The only the Lord holds it back, but the church, the intercession, it releases the hand of God. Yes. So, hallelujah. The Lord is good and his mercy, mercy endures forever. <laughs> All right, that's good. Word. Thank you. All right. Okay. You can come stage right here. Yeah.